All right, welcome everyone to the Gloria J. Taylor Foundation Fireside Chat. Um, we are here with our alumni from various institutions and a couple of our alumni who just recently graduated. Our panel consists of three dynamic young ladies. I'm going to have you introduce yourselves. We'll start with Ms. Jalayla and let us know what school you go to. All right, I'm Jalayla Harris and I go to Eastern Illinois University. Um, I'm Jayla Dixon and I go to West City University. I'm Alexis Franklin, and I go to Oral Roberts University. Okay. So we have a couple of questions that we're going to ask them, but we also have audience participation. So whatever question you feel you want to expound on, or I may call on you. Okay, so be ready. Stay ready, right? <laughs> All right. This question goes for everyone. What is some advice that you have for incoming freshmen that they can take with them as they navigate this new journey? We'll start with Jalewa. So my advice is... Get to know your professors because second semester coming, it's hitting us hard. It's hitting us hard. We all know that. When you get to know the professors, build it, they go, okay, you might be sitting on a 69, they might bump you into like a 70, but you will see. So I say, make sure you know your teachers, make sure you go to your on campus, because that's definitely going to help you get friends in the long run, so you're not like a long campus or whatever. Jayla? I'll say, be on top of your work. Um, like first semester is kind of easy then the second semester it gets kind of like hard so like you got to be like constantly and consistently on top of your work and especially like Julia was saying to know your professors because they, they will help you yeah I would say be friends with everybody I think in high school one of the misconceptions that we have is like it's a popularity contest. So like, oh, you got the cool people, you got like the lanes, all this different stuff. But like, that's not the case in college. Like, everybody's on an even playing field. You want to be friends with everybody, um, especially because anybody can help with your homework. You don't know who's going to be like the next Bill Gates. Okay, so like, I think a lot of times in our head we think like, okay, well, who's the person that's going to be like this? But be kind to everyone in college because you never know. Like, everybody can help you and be of service to you. So. Anyone in the audience, because you all are special guests, would you like to expound on that? Those? I would say to allow yourself to make mistakes. I know mm -hmm. we can get in our head like, oh, we have to get everything done, we gotta stay on top of our work. But we are not perfect. We gonna mess up sometimes. So if you just allow yourself to make those mistakes, it can be easier. Mm -hmm. Good job. Anyone else would like to elaborate? Oh, nice, nice. Second question. What are some characteristics you have learned about yourself while at college? Who would like to go first on that one? College is a place where you find out who you really are, what you really made of. You find out your good, your bad, and your ugly. So what are some, let's start with the positive things that you find out about yourself while you're in college. Let's start with Alexis. I think in college, I definitely learned that I love people. I mean, I've always loved people, but I think in college, I realized like the pros and cons, like loving people um, and like just giving like your all. I'm the kind of person that's like, that will devote yourself to a friendship. Uh, so that would definitely be like the positive. But if I were to add like the con to that, it's also when you realize that in college, you devote yourself so much to like a friend circle, mm -hmm. you would realize like how quickly like in the things shift, especially because one semester you may have like somebody in class um, consistently, the next semester you may never see that person again and then you'll meet a whole new group. So I would say like expound your friend groups, expand upon your friend groups because like you would never know like who, you might think you found your best friend your first semester, then you meet somebody your sophomore year and you're like, oh wait, like this is actually the person that I'm gonna be doing college with, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think, I found how much I love people, but I also found like you can't, there's such a loyalty thing, especially with Chicago people. Mm -hmm. I feel like you will realize when you get to school, like everybody's not like those who are from Chicago. Like we are a different breed of people. And so when you really meet people, you'll begin to say like, okay, you'll get to find the pros and cons and stuff like that. And you realize there's more people to know, there's more people to meet and stuff like that. So that's like what I learned about myself. It's like my love for people. Jayla? I would say what I learned from myself in college is I learned how to be to myself more because, um, well, in school, like I had like a lot of friends, well, technically. So it was like, we, we were a big friend group. So like, I was always around them and I never really had time for myself like 
I was losing myself and I was like going to hang around with my friends and then I'll be like getting to my room late and then I'll just like never like had no me time like but now like I I journal and I pray a lot so it's like that's my me time now so I had to learn how to have my me time. Yeah. And then you had basketball as well. Oh, yeah. So five of them practices and mm-hmm. hanging out with friends mm-hmm. and not being able to spend time with yourself and find out who Jayla really is, right? Mm-hmm. Jayla, what about you? So I want to piggyback off of what Jayla said. So like my con is I definitely did not have time to myself. I was very busy in ACWC class. I worked two jobs. So I was doing like a lot out of my semesters. Um, a pro is I like putting myself out there. I like meeting new people. Like, ever since I became a fed, I met a lot of people, especially in the organizations I would have never put myself out there to talk to. So that would be one of my pros. Like, I see that I love talking to people. All right, audience, uh, Kahari, what are some characteristics that you learned about yourself that you didn't know? Um, I learned that um, I really like the smile in everybody's face because I feel like <laughs> some people take for granted. Like, mm-hmm. some people take your nice, Niceness for is that a word? Kindness for granted. Kindness, yes. Some people take your kindness for granted. And I just learned, you know, you gotta just watch how much you give it to a person. Mm-hmm. Like everybody don't deserve all of you. Mm-hmm. So I learned that. Yeah. And watch who I hang around. And you don't have to tell everybody your business. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So very important. Be careful who's in your friend circle. Everyone's not your friend. Yeah. yeah. And you guys have heard that be careful who you select to hang around with. I think about John Romero all the time. How talented he is. And look mm-hmm. at his circle. His circle is not doing him any good. His circle is going to cost him a lot of money. Yeah. That's not a friend that's going to videotape you acting crazy instead of correcting you. So be careful who you hang around. Jackie, what do you want to say about that? Um, I learned that I don't like sharing my energy with a lot of people. And that I don't need to really share my energy with people in order to interact with them. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Um, especially in business, it's a lot of networking. In classes, it's a lot of networking. And I always felt like I have a bubbly personality, but sometimes I feel like I, I'm sharing my energy or giving my energy to somebody else. And I had to learn that I can put up this wall and like be this person who's in class or who's networking with these people and still reserve who Jackie really is to mm-hmm. myself. So I think um, that's a really big pro that I learned this year. Nice. Sadiq, going into his senior year at Western Illinois University. Mm-hmm. What have you learned about yourself in these last three and a half years? Um, to piggyback off of what Alexis was saying, um, I like to be, uh, I know that I get along with people very well. Mm-hmm. I know that on campus, I'm very friendly with everybody and get along with them. And I know that a negative to that that I also relate to is that sometimes people take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. But um, that's that's pretty much what I've learned about throughout my um, college experience so far, is that I'm able to connect and network with people very well that I wasn't I never, I never knew about that prior to going into college. Nice. Charles? I feel like I learned how to um, keep my circle small and like choose my friends wisely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very, very important. How about you, Ebony? Um, I feel like the biggest thing I learned is like how to differentiate my surface level friendships between like mm-hmm. my actual like intimate friendships. Like I'm the kind of person where Anybody I'm around, I want to feel like close to them, but like you can't have everybody that close to you all the yeah. time. So like mm-hmm. in college, you come across a lot of people that aren't meant to be your like best friend or you know your friend that you tell everything to. Like you might just see them in class, or you might just do homework with them, or you might just you know it's like a lot of surface level. So like I feel like I'm learning how to teach myself to like try not to be so intense with all of my friendships and just mm-hmm. be able to like kind of weed out, okay, who is it that I want to be close with, and who do I see myself being close with as a good friend, and who am I just going to keep it, like, at this surface? That's very nice. How long did it take you to learn that? Honestly, mm-hmm. I'm still learning. Okay. And I wouldn't say I'm not to Yes. Like, it's still something that I'm working on. And I think it's going to go all the way to adulthood. I still have that problem, because you want to see the good in everyone, and everyone doesn't, unfortunately, may not have good intentions to be in your presence, to be in your space, and to even... Uh, attached to your energy, so be very, very careful with that. 
great, great. As we know, May is Mental Health Month, and this is the last day of May. So I'm going to ask the panel, how would you describe your uh, mental health being at school? Um, what challenges did you have being so far away from home, not being able to um, do the things you normally would do, not having your parents stay on top of you? So I'm going to start with Jalayla. How was your mental health in school? Uh, it wasn't at all good because, mm -hmm. like I said, sex semester started picking up for me. Had two jobs, definitely like depressed. I'm like, I gotta get this money. I need this money. I got other stuff to do. Nobody, I, I felt like nobody was helping me, mm -hmm. so I had to put myself in a growing position. Which, as I said, we're still growing. We're still young adults or whatever. I needed my people, but they weren't there, so I had to like lean on myself, lean on my bonds. It was hard. <laughs> it was definitely hard, but. I feel like I persevered through it. Like at the end of the semester, I was like, you know, just get the work done. And people, they'll, they'll come around sometime, they'll see like how much like college is, is very, it's sad. It's sad. Mm -hmm. Jayla? I said no mental health wasn't really, it was, it was bad. Um, well, because I thought being far away from home, like I would like grow up and it would teach me how to grow up and um, mature and do stuff on my own. But I'm s like so close with my family. It was like, and they always helping me. So it was like, I don't know what to do. And I couldn't just like see them or they would help me. So I was like, always like, but me, like I'm the type of person that want to do stuff like by myself. Like I don't want help. So it was like, I just want to just like learn how to do it and do it for myself instead of asking for help. So it was like, cause you like my family do stuff for me. Cause like I'm like the youngest out of my family. So it's like I can't. I don't. I want to show them that I could be mature and I can do stuff on my own instead of just asking. So it was like that was like going through my mind and stuff. And then it was also like basketball, like. I was doing all this hard work in basketball, then I wasn't getting rewarded on the court, or like I wasn't getting the time, the playing time. So I was like, it's always like, what am I doing wrong, or am I like, am I like doing something wrong or anything? And like I'm, like again, I'm not the type of person that would like go up to somebody and be like, am I doing something wrong? Or I just overthink. So, and then like social wise, like. I was like always like thinking about like how people think of me and stuff like that. So I was just like always in my head and always overthinking. And then it was just like I was getting these a lot of anxiety attacks and stuff. And then like when my mom would call, she would say like how are you doing and stuff. And then like me not not liking talking to people, I would say I'm fine or. Um, I wouldn't say like, <clears throat> I would say like I'm fine or like I just don't like talking about my feelings. So it was like, I will just, you know, brush it away and just try to live life. Okay, Lexi? Yeah, for me, my mental health was pretty good. I think the time where it got uh, kind of shaky was definitely going back to like the friendship thing. I think I invested a lot into certain friends that like didn't really deserve that much investment. Um, and I think even for me, it, it it started to put me in a place where I'm like, man, like I'm giving all of this, like why why don't I feel like it's being reciprocated and things of that sort. But aside from that, I would say that my mental health is pretty good. I go to a really good church out there in Oklahoma. As well as like I have a pretty solid relationship with God, and so I think like with prayer and things like that, like I begin to realize like you know what, like I need to make a choice of you know what I'm gonna choose to be happy, like I'm gonna choose to be joyful, you know, in the midst of so many things going on, especially with like I'm the kind of person I don't know about you guys, like I'm the kind of friend where people come and tell their business to. It's like when you become the kind of friend, you have two options. You can be the person that shares that with them and become weighed down with them. Or you can be the person that gives it back to God and gives it back to the person. Like, you know, like, I don't have to carry this. And I show others, you don't have to carry this. And I think when you change that mindset of, like, 
I don't need to carry this. This isn't my burden to carry. Then, like, you'll realize you'll start to get lighter and things like that. And so there was times where, like, I began to get overwhelmed. I began to get heavy. And quick advice, even aside from the question, like, the friends, it's important to have friends in your major and then just friends that are going to be your friends. Because I have friends that are outside of my major, and they will be done with their homework. And then they'll be like, come hang out with us. And they didn't understand the major I had. And so I would give up with doing my homework for friends that had nothing to do with my major and didn't understand. And so I started slacking in school because I started, like, being, and it's okay to have a versatile friend group, but you have to have those people that have the same major as you that's going to challenge you. And so that was one of the downfalls as well as that they would be done with their homework and I wasn't done with mine, but I would give up on mine to be with my friends and I would just make different sacrifices that people aren't doing. They're getting their homework done. Like people are getting their stuff together, you know, and so that was one of those things. But all that to say, when it comes to mental health, you really have to understand, like, you know what, I need to make a choice. You know, people are making decisions for themselves. And when you start letting other people dictate your feelings, it becomes like, you, you become, your emotions become um, based off what other people are doing with, when, when it comes to others. But then when you realize like, I can't trust my life in your hands. Like you, you can't, you can't have my heart. You can't have my spirit, you know. Um, it really just changed the game for me when I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like I have to make sure that um, I'm not holding on to these things and becoming burdened and weighed down. So that was it for me. So you guys, Chuck, let's talk about your first year in Tennessee State to your second year. How was your mental health and how was your growth? Because we've seen a transition in you mentally as well as physically. So what turned it around for you? Honestly, I feel like my family and friends kind of like help my mental health. Like my mental health was always good, and um, I feel like I always had a good support system around me, so that kind of like helped with everything, like the body and the um, kind of like my grades shifting and getting better and stuff like that. Okay, so you relied a lot on your family when things were a little rocky. They was there for you support. Yeah. Great. Um, for Harvey. Um. Okay. My mental health was a little iffy because. A lot of people see me in there, you know, waiting on that smile because I'm always smiling. But it's like, behind that smile, it's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. It had really got bad when my best friend passed in January. And it was horrible. And everybody was trying to, like, lift me up. But I'm not used to, like, like Jamie said, I'm not used to, you know, talking my feelings out because I'm always that person that people can come and talk to me and I can make them feel better. But... Sometimes I feel like I don't have that person that I could do that too. Cause yeah, like my family, they, that's not it. Like a lot of people can go back and lean on their family. And sometimes I feel like I can't because they talk so much. It's like, I can tell my auntie something and next thing you know, my grandma found it out and calling me about it. And my teacher would be like, oh, I won't tell nobody, but you know. So I just, you know, Sometimes keep it all in and I realize that crying is okay. Mm -hmm. Like my family will always call me a car. See, I'm a cancer, so I'm already emotional. But I realize crying is okay and that's just a way how I cope with everything. I just have to cry and let it out. Okay. Jacket? Oh, what is it? I don't go to school but you know, I still of course deal with mental health. And I know like a big thing for me is I started take vitamins, mm -hmm. like vitamin D and like vitamin C, and I realized that I was very deficient mm -hmm. in a lot of things, so when I started to like really take my vitamins, that helped me a lot, and like it just kind of like lifted a dark cloud off of me, so. Okay. That's one of them, me too, but a lot of my mental health, my mental health started off high, kind of, and then it kind of just like lowered as school went on. A lot of it was finances, a lot of it was the death of my best friend as well. Um, and then I kind of went into school with a selective friend group who were also friends with him. And we kind of heavily relied on each other. So when they left the school, I kind of felt like I was by myself. And I lost a lot of friends. Um, so I never really trusted to let anyone new in. So I was kind of just isolated. Um, and then I started working and one thing I will say is that college counselors do not understand that it's not as simple as school, and that's it. That's my main focus. 
Like, I don't have a family to take care of me. You know, I'm taking care of myself. I'm putting myself, yes, I have financial aid and scholarships or whatever, but as far as financially, I'm in control of my own finances. So there is not an option for me to just say, okay, I'm just gonna focus on school and that's all I'm gonna do. And my college counselor a lot of times be like, well, we need to remember school is more important. And I'm like, okay, are you gonna pay my car note? Like, and they don't understand that, but, like like Alexa said, you have to give a lot of things to God. Um, so once I start realizing that it, it's it's a lot of it is out of my control, mm-hmm. and I can only stress about what I can control and and change what I can control, and I started to do that. I also started a routine, my chlorophyll mm-hmm. and my vitamins, and and waking up and making sure I'm taking care of myself first, and that has definitely lifted me. I stayed home this last semester, and at first. I thought it was the best decision ever, and I was like, oh, this was the worst decision ever. But now at the end of the semester, it was a good decision for me because I feel like I saw a different person, uh, a different version of myself at home being in college um, than just on campus and being a student. So I'm going back next semester, but I feel like I can go back now with a better head on my shoulders because I've seen myself at home, I've seen myself at school, and I know like where I need to be or what I need to do to be successful. Evan? Um, my mental health, the first year I was at Eastern, I feel like it was bad, but I don't even like to look at it as bad anymore because I feel like I reflect on that time and like it was needed for me to like be who I am mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. So like in the moment, yeah, I felt like it was really bad and I felt like I was down. It was really due to like isolation. You know, everybody got their they first semester freshman friend group that they fall out with and then that just, but that really like, took a toll on me. So like, I think I let it allow and dictate the rest of my year. And so like, I was kind of scared to like branch out or like reach out to new people because I'm like, what if it happened again? Mm-hmm. Like I can't take it twice in one year. Like I can only do so much. <laughs> so like, I just kind of stayed to myself and stayed in my, my room. But like, even though I felt down or I felt sad, like I learned so much about myself and I feel like I talked about or, you know, like I can talk to my girl, I'm crazy. <laughs> but I talked about and just went through so many things that I felt like I needed to, to like even unhealed stuff or like stuff that I didn't talk about anymore mm-hmm. or stuff that I just pushed down. Like when you're alone, it comes up. Like it, it's nobody to, you don't have anywhere to hide. So like, I feel like me having to face all of that stuff was necessary for me to be able to like move forward mm-hmm. from like going to this next year with a whole different mindset. So like. It was bad, but at the same time, I felt like it was like necessary. Yeah. I would say mental health is very, very important. You see a lot about it now, especially for students of color, because it's so much that you got to deal with on campus, from financing to being away from home, to wanting to make your family proud, to friends, you're trying to be friends with people, and you don't want to cut people off, even though you may or may not know they're good for you. So it is very, very important that you have accountability partners. It should be at least one person that you can confide in, you know, you know, not the auntie that's going to go tell grandma, then grandma going to tell everybody, family. you want to have somebody that you can release to, and therapy is okay. We have a big taboo about that in our culture, but uh, I wish Leslie was able to be on, uh, she, um, some of you all know Leslie Coney, uh, she is, a, uh, she has a, a therapist that she swears by that has helped her to talk off the ledge, to make her stay focused. And she's in the church, her father's a pastor. Sometimes we just need some outlets. We need somebody you know, that don't know us to know us. You know what I'm saying? They can give us sound, solid advice. So whatever you do, make sure you have someone pray about who you can have in your life that you can talk to about some things. It's okay to get a therapist. Sometimes the college counselors are pretty busy, but they should have counseling services. One thing I like about Central State, they have a counseling service there. Several colleges have that. Make sure you have an outlet. Make sure you have that release because it's going to get intense. You know, sometimes we put up this shield like everything's not like a heart. You're going to always see her smiling, but I know she's not happy all the time. We've had talks. Okay, so I know it's the thing that she's going on. So a lot of us walking around with this, oh, everything is great. Well, it's not. If you're human, you're going to have some problems. If you're human, you're going to have some situations. And it's okay because that's a part of life. Okay? For my newly, recently graduate from high school, what are you guys taking in so far? Steve, what, what are you taking in so far? Um, just if we hang around. Because not, yeah, not everybody for you. Uh, yes, and you don't want to learn it the hard way. And maybe we have to learn it the hard way. 
Sometimes, some things you have to go through to realize. Okay, you know what? I probably should be thinking around this first. Yeah. AD, what are you picking up? The about the friendships and the mental health. Mm -hmm. How you have to like watch out, and sometimes you gotta check on yourself to make sure you're good. Check on yourself. Yeah. That's it right there. I love how Alexis, uh, Alexis, Alexis, Asia says she taking vitamins. Take care of your temple. Take care of your body because stress affects your body. You be having pains. You young. Y'all be talking about y'all back hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Twenty years. I'm about the back hurt. What? <laughs> what is that? That's because you're not taking care of you. You got stress. Stress will land in different places. Y'all too young. You talking about my knees hurt? Mm -hmm. No. Let's, let's get out of there. What are you taking in, Jessica? Um, right now, I'm really just adjusting to change. Mm -hmm. um, starting to work. I haven't worked before, so I'm doing that. And I see my friends every day. Mm -hmm. um, me time, like they said. Uh, yes. I've been trying to get like closer to God and like, yes. take more care of myself. So that's, that's it. Very, very much so. Okay, I got something. Mm -hmm. So I was the type of person that didn't like want to have like do therapy because I thought like if I did therapy. I was gonna be crazy, so I didn't want to be like, no, I don't want to do therapy. And I was always holding all this stuff in, and I wasn't telling nobody, and it made it worse. So I'll just say like, make like therapy is not bad. It's just helping somebody to talk to and the outlet to like release. So it's like therapy is not bad. That's all I have to say. Great, great. Yeah, I agree with that. So Jayla. What are some ways you pull back into yourself when you're burnt out from an assignment, from an exam, from a game, from practice? How do you pull back and refill yourself back up? Um, well, if I feel like I'm over like whelming myself, I just like take time, breathe, you know. And just take like a nice hot shower and then like just press the reset button. Just like clean my room, declutter everything, and just, you know, just, you know, pray, take, have my little self-care day, and then like, just, that helps me with this. Right. Alexis? I think for me, it would have to be being by myself. Mm -hmm. I think one thing you realize in college is that you do not eat lunch with a group of people every day. Like, you do not always have people around you. You will go to the diner out by yourself sometimes, you know? And so I think it would definitely be finding something that was recreational. I think a lot of times, uh, a lot of the things that we do, we get like instant gratification from it and we get like a reward, but we have to do something that has like you know, I might not see the fruit of this right now, mm -hmm. um, and it's like, but it, but I enjoy it, you know. And so that for me, that was uh, I would I brought my guitar with me to college. I would, like write songs. Mm -hmm. I would just be in my rooms playing my guitar. I actually found like a a love for movies like mm -hmm. during school because I would just I would have my TV in my room. I'll go back in my room. I'll just watch a movie, you know, and just enjoy that time by myself because I think a lot of times we. I think I'm always thinking about how can I do something for somebody else, but I think I started thinking about, you know what, what's recreational, you know, like, how can I sit back, I like this mess, I'm like, I want to get into crocheting and like all that different stuff because, um, you know, different things, I went to a boxing class, like, you know, just different things that is out of the box that I may not see the fruit of instantly, but it's like, this is something that I'm enjoying, it doesn't benefit anybody mm -hmm. else but me, you know, so I think that's what I found. Yeah. So, okay, to step out the box. I think Jayla now, when she was going, she was stressed out and said, okay, let's go to Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. Who would ask them? Who mm -hmm. does that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we don't do that. <laughs> that was so much fun. Mm -hmm. That was fun. I was mm -hmm. scared. I was going to hit myself in the back of the head. I didn't know what was going to go on, but... We went asked the one that released a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. You can look at the, the little hole be like, oh, that's somebody got on my So find something that you can step out of your comfort zone that's going to give you some peace. Mm -hmm. I tell Steph all the time, find something to bring you peace. Whether it's listening to music, walking, outside in nature mm -hmm. is awesome. So you definitely need to make sure you take care of yourself and energy. What about you, Jalena? So towards like my second semester, that's what like really made me think outside the box. Mm -hmm. I stopped hanging with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, especially my my um, first semester, stopped hanging with a lot of people. So I was mostly by myself. Like I wasn't going to parties. I was like, what is the point? And we're just gonna talk over the music. Like 
it's not really benefiting me the way. So what I started doing was I started like going outside and journaling because I see I need to release a lot of things because I was very overwhelmed, like overwhelmed. Second semester, I started going on more walks by myself, which like I said, I was by myself anyway, but I just had to like really look into nature. Like I leave my phone in the room because I'll be like, oh, my phone takes like, Jalila, you're not taking in mm-hmm. nature. So that's what I started doing. I started seeing like a big uplift, but it wasn't like what I need. I really need to get off, get off the campus, but I didn't have it because we're in Charleston. So couldn't really <laughs> go that far. So I was just like, no, walk around and just look at the campus, like breathe, like just hear what are you seeing, what are you like, what are you hearing? So that's what helped me more when I was um, going through my semesters. I know most of you all are still at the same institution you started at. I know uh, Ebony has transferred, Jayla will be transferring. So I asked you, um, my question, I'm going to start with Ebony. How did you know your choice of college was right for you? And if not, what did you, what was the change? What was the game changer to make you want to transfer? Like my first year or like how did I know that like Illinois State was right or Eastern yeah. was how did you know Eastern wasn't right and um, Illinois State was right for you? Um, honestly, looking back at it now, I feel like Eastern wasn't right for me because of the like head space I was in. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I can't really like say if it was Eastern. Like there was things that happened at the school that I feel like definitely did like bring me down further. Mm-hmm. But it's also like I feel like that could happen at any institution. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I kind of combined like where my head was at the time along with the things that were happening at Eastern that kind of made me feel like it wasn't right for me. But honestly, I feel like the the change of my head space is what made Illinois State like good for me, if that makes sense. So like, yeah, I feel like if I would have felt like how I feel now at Eastern, I would, may have been okay, but I will never know because exactly. I left. So it's right. like, I mean, there, I don't know. There was, I didn't know that like the, the thing that I was experiencing at Eastern, like when it came to like racial wise and like the town I was in was like, I, I know that's not where I wanted to be or like those are not the kind of people I wanted to surround me. So that kind of played a big part in it too. Okay. And Jayla started off at a HBCU and now she's going to a PWI in the fall. So what, um, when did you realize that that HBCU wasn't um, the right fit for you? Oh, I love my HBCU, but I just knew that I wasn't on on the right path because I was, I was still doing my work, but I was always partying with my friends and I was always out like every night. So with this, but with this PWI, I feel like this is going to help me get back on track on focusing on my career and like just, you know, uh, I won't be out as much, but I'll still be like, still be like focusing because like Kathleen, like we're like, it's kind of like two schools, like we had state on the other side of the gate, so we was always Either if he wasn't at Kathleen, he was at State. So it was like, I was always outside, like, and then, but I feel like with this school, I feel like I would be, like, you know, more centered and focused on what I have to do. And sometimes you have to make a shift because when you get out of a situation, um, there are several students and parents that I know that um, are, uh, kids are making different changes because they don't want to stay in that same rut. They don't want to just be just going through. One of my friend's parents is um, really struggling with her because she wants to stay at HBCU because she loves the she loves HBCU life. She loves kicking it. She her GPA is going down. Um, she has not been focused as she should have been as she should be. She hasn't matured yet. And she's going into a junior year. Everybody freshman year, you know, you get freshman. But she has not peaked up that maturity as of yet. And her parents are gravely concerned about that. Like, when is it going to kick in that you got to stop all this? You're doing the same thing. I never forget talking to Kahari. She was like, okay, this is her first semester. It's the same party. It's the same people at the party. You're just doing the same thing. You know, when are we going to let this go? When is this going to stop? So you have to learn. Sometimes you have to, may have to remove yourself from that environment in order for you to be whole. Um, so you have to just know who you are and what's best for you. Okay? Kahari, did you be in at your HBCU? How um, how has it been? Do you think it was the right decision? Yes, 
Um, everybody, like, when I first got down there, like, because it's so far, so everybody always asked me why did I choose Gremlin. And I, I, off the back, I knew that that's where I wanted to go, like, mm-hmm. before I even visit. But, because I know, like, the culture that I wanted to, I knew the culture I wanted to be around. And, like, I know myself. I know I'm very outgoing, and I know what I can take. And a PWI wouldn't have been able to handle me. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So, and then Gremlin is not like a big, big HBCU like Howard or Hampton or something like that. It's not that big. And Gremlin is just like a family. Like, we like we could be walking to the cab. Well, I could be with myself walking to the cab. And somebody could just be speaking to me like, I became close to my professor, like, and she just like, I know she wants the best for me. Like, every time I see her, she give me a hug. Like, it's just, yeah, I knew grandma's right for me. But you talked about grandma for a while, I think. Yeah, you like, since I was in seventh grade, I've wanted to go to grandma. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's a reason why we say grandma family, because, like, we like a big family. And, like, we could go to certain people in offices when we have a problem. Like, they never want us to leave. Like, we was talking about transferring when it came to housing, but we got stuff situated because they don't want to see us leave. Like, they want us there, so. And that's one of the, um, I would say, struggles with some HBCUs. Sometimes they don't take care of the business. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of external situation that should not be. Yes. I.e. Yeah. housing, making sure your financial aid is posted. Um, yeah. I can tell y'all some horror stories about Howard. Y'all look at them totally different. I can tell you some horror stories about Spelman. You'll be like, for real? Because I have family that's there. But um, one thing I can say about students that go to HBCUs, um, I even was speaking with one of my students that graduated from Harvard. She's how she said, I, she said, I think you just have to go through this process. Yeah. You're conditioned to think that you have to go through that. I kind of disagree with that. Of course, you might have some challenges. You should have some, if your professors don't reach back out to you, mm-hmm. um, if you can't get through to financial aid, those are things you're gonna happen on any campus, okay? Yeah. But not posting your financial aid and you drop in one class and then you uh, withdraw from the whole institution because someone's error on that end. Some of those things you should not have to deal with. All of us gonna do with something on the campus. PWI, HBC, you're gonna have some challenges. You're never gonna go through all four years and everything's gonna be peachy free. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, that's one thing you're I would say have. about HBCU. It's very unorganized, but I think it's a learning experience at the same time too. Like I dealt it, dealt with the whole thing like without my mother, so it's like. I feel like I could, I did some growing, like doing a lot of stuff on my own. Mm-hmm. So yeah, taking care of business. Chuck, how do you feel about your HBCU experience? I feel like TSU helped me step out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, like experiencing new things and meeting new people. And I feel like it's always stuff going on, like on campus and off campus. But at the same time, I had to like lock in because I was on the verge of getting kicked out. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, I just feel like it really helped me do that. Yeah. I have to tell his success story, if you don't mind. So we went down to go see Chuck playing football games, so we thought. Yeah. <laughs> I was hyped. He was going to see Chuck. So when he come over to see the, uh, what, I said, don't you got to go to the, to the football field? So he did not tell us that he was not playing because of grades. But that's okay, because next semester he was on the dean's list. You talking about being resilient and turning it around? You know, he went from, his dad came down there with his friend. He did not want to tell us that he was not playing. You know, because he, well, he felt like, but he showed, he showed himself, I can do this. He's been on this two years in a row now, right? Yeah. Two years in a row, dropped, what, 70 pounds? Yeah. 70 pounds and on the Dean's list. Got his mental and his physical together. Okay, took care of his, his temple and his mindset. So that's a success story there. You know, okay, let me go quit all this party. Let me step all this, let me tell, handle my business. So he's able to take care of that. But I do know you had some problems with housing, right? When you staying in a hotel? Yeah, I was staying at a hotel. And this, this is your sophomore year. You should have had preference, right? Yeah. So those are some things I have problems with. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to play HBCU. That should have happened. Yeah, you, that's what happened with me. Mm-hmm. Like, you had, I know kids even at, at other institutions had to stay in hotels because they took, you know, I'm not going to go into the good and the bad and the ugly because there's some good and bad and ugly on all campuses. But I just think something. I know Jackie had a problem with her um, PWI. Well, she was told her what to say. She took care of it. She got it done. <laughs> she got me. We was, I was on the college too, I think. I was like, okay, say this, talk to this person. Boom, she got to take care of it. Okay? So you're going to have situations everywhere. Okay? 
Um, anybody else want to comment on that? If they think their school, why'd you choose Central State, uh, girly? Jessica? Um, at first I was going to choose like a bigger school, like a bigger HBC, like Jackson or something. Mm -hmm. And I, I started to talk to the social worker in my school, and he was telling me about like Central State, and like, I, didn't, I never heard of it before. Like, mm -hmm. And he was telling me, like, oh, it's a small school, but it's HBCU. Because I've always wanted to go to a store like college. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me about their, like, social work programs or um, therapy programs. And I started to look into it. And it kind of changed my, like, whole idea of, like, wanting to go to a big school. Because I'm not that, like, person to be around a million people. I like small, like, co-committed situations. So, yeah, it just gave me, like, a home vibe because it's small. It's still an HBCU. It feels like I can feel home there. Okay. AD, you, cho you chose a PWI, um, Mizzou. I uh, love that campus. I love that Lazy River. I'm always going to talk about that. But that school has produced some top-notch um, students. Everyone comes out of there are gainfully employed. Everyone I know that's going there, everyone of my students that went there are doing well. So what was your determining factor of choosing Mizzou? Well, I had talked to like a lot of students there and a lot of students that was like, in my in my class, me like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go there. But I was like, I'm not sure at first. So I had went out there for a second time, did another tour of everything, food places and stuff, resources. Mm -hmm. And I learned they had a lot of resources for the black culture. Mm -hmm. So I was, and I didn't want to go to HBCU because I don't want to be around too many of the black culture. <laughs> <laughs> so that PWI seemed pretty good for me to go to, mm -hmm. and I got family, so mm -hmm. I should be good. Yeah, sometimes being around us could be too much, and <laughs> just, let's be 100 sometimes. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Go ahead, <laughs> Layla. So I'm thinking of transferring because I don't really like Eastern like that. It's the culture. I want to be around more of my people. The culture is out there. It's, it's, it's weird. Like, a lot of people, they don't have common sense. And sometimes I don't like being, I don't like being in environments like that, like people reaching over you and stuff. It's just like subtle racism. I hate dealing with it on a daily basis because people saying, oh yeah, we're for you, we're for you, you're not for us because you don't hear us. So I don't think it'll transfer it to HBC because that's where I always want it. And fun fact, don't listen to your family. Do what you want to do because I let them talk into a lot of things and I went down there thinking everything was cool. It was not cool <laughs> at all. I'm gonna pick it back. Yeah, don't pick it your thoughts. Um, if we can be transparent, can yeah. we be transparent? Okay. One of the reasons, and to correct me if I'm wrong, you followed a friend down there, mm -hmm. right? And then that friendship dissolved. So I think that tainted her desire of that institution. Because mm -hmm. when you have a stain on something, something that's happened, it's hard to look at it differently. Like if somebody uh, ripped your dress or had an accident in your car, and even when they fall, you still not gonna let the person start your car. <laughs> you're gonna feel some kind of way, you know what I'm saying? So I think they had a lot of shit. And I may be a little biased, because I went to Eastern, even though I didn't, I didn't graduate there, but I think it was a great, because with us, we were only like 2% of the culture there. So we stood together, you're talking about family. Yeah, you, we, stood, we had to, you know what I'm saying? So we was there, we was locked in, we supported each other. You know, the football games, we was there, basketball games, we supported each other. I don't see that now. I don't see that even in the high schools with the support. Yeah, like I said, when I went to Thornton, um, the, the, the high schools was locked in. I mean, it was full. Y'all don't support games, y'all don't support y'all students, y'all team, nothing. So it's a shift there. Uh, so I can't for say, actually say it's the institution, it's the people that go to the institution. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have some teachers down there and people down there don't care? Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. there's some on a, on HBCU campus that don't care. Mm -hmm. Trust the belief. <laughs> okay. So it's all about how you make it. But mm -hmm. I think a lot of it do with you get tainted because of a situation. Yeah. And it just kind of follows like yeah, the fall. semester. Exactly. But then it was neat because, like I said, I wouldn't be in my organization. I'd be still mm -hmm. following them people around that I used to be friends with. So. It helped me out in the long run because, like I said, I have bonds now. Like, we're this, we're sisters. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, you know what? I needed that to happen because if it didn't, I would not be on organization. I would not be doing BSU, mm -hmm. not doing anything that I wanted to do. It would mostly be on them. So it needed to happen for me. Like, lock in, Jaleel, you got this. You don't need a lot of people to hang out with you. So it was easy. It definitely helped me along, uh, along the way. Great. Jim, I say HBCUs have their pros and cons. Like, with HBCUs, you. Well, smaller agencies, I can't say no bigger. I I do know that you get a family. Like, you get, like, like my friends now, like, even though we're, like, a big group, they feel like, I feel like I knew them for, like,
like a long time. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I like they feel like sisters to me. Like even though like I was transferring, they made me this whole big like book of like our pictures together. They gave me a basketball for like scenes and stuff. And like it hurt me like leaving them because like those are like my sisters now. But like I go well, like being around like the reason why I chose to go to HBCU because I want to be around like us. But I realized that we're not that good of a people because <laughs> <laughs> we're just ghetto, ratchet. There's a lot of, a lot of like, it, it is like a lot of good people that like choose the right path, but some people, they weren't raised like how we are raised. Mm -hmm. So they was like, they're just, and it like made me look at our culture differently because it was like, Y'all really, like, y'all parents really let you act like this? Like, y'all, like, in the middle of the street doing all this stuff, and it's just, like, y'all just, like, do this for, and then, like, then y'all, like, and then, like, state, they're a public campus, so it's, like, people can come in and out of their campus, mm -hmm. and so they'll be, like, we'll, have, we'll hear gunshots, and, like, we heard gunshots. Even though we're a private campus, we can still hear them because we're so close to them. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I don't, like, it made me look at people differently. Like, <laughs> we get, yeah, sometimes, yeah, it's interesting, yeah. So you kind of get a feel, you're gonna have no pros and no cons. And I used to read these little articles about the shootings at South Carolina State. I'm like, was you there? Was you at that party? One of her friends was leaving a fraternity party because she saw things about to be escalated. So she left, that's what people do. Okay, you see some stuff about to break out? She's at a stop sign, they're shooting randomly. She has three bullet holes in her car. Her friend dug down, you know, she dug the, a bullet hole through her friend's phone. Mm -hmm. And she left, she did what she was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And this happened to her at a, a stop. Now, could they happen in any place? Yes, because it was shooting out at SIUE. Then some of our kids is in line. Okay. After the girl said, I'll never forget, Darius and them was in line to go to a party. The line was too long, so they left. Somebody got shot. Somebody got shot at Eastern. It happens on PWIs as well as HBCUs. It's more prevalent on us because of the open campuses. Mm -hmm. They allow anybody on there. Um, they was chasing somebody. What, we came down there to get you. They was on camp. They was stealing people's cars. Yeah, they stole you know? people. We, me and my friends, we were going to a, a picnic, and we was walking in the parking lot, and we see state people breaking into Kaplan's parking lot. Like, they was on Kaplan, like Kaplan people's cars, and they was breaking into cars, and then we see police officers chasing them, and they like, well, our dumb security guards chasing them on a golf cart. Like, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they was like breaking it, and they literally have a state shirt on. So it was like, that's how, like, the state is just horrible. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, you have pros and cons everywhere. It happens everywhere. It happens everywhere. It seems it's more prevalent. And it's unfortunate that we hurt each other. I think that's a lot to do with You're supposed to be there to get education and grow mature and to be productive and you take in and you just want to cause harm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wrap up a couple of things, though. But again, I wanted to ask you guys um, anxiety, because we talked about anxiety and mental health. What do you guys do, all my kids that are away in college, what do you do to overcome your anxiety while you're on campus? Jackie, what do you do? Um, honestly, oh, okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take time to myself. When I had, when I do have a car, more so it'd be like, okay, I'm getting in the shower and I'm gonna clean my room and I'm gonna take a walk around campus a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, call me crazy, but I will literally go sit in my car, just like close all my doors, make sure nobody around, and I'll just sit there and scream until I'm like, okay. I'm cool, like, because sometimes, I, I, I will say I'm a very short-tempered person, and I know that about myself, so self-awareness is really good. Mm -hmm. I know that about myself, so I try not to take it out on other people, so I have to try to find outlets, like, my first reaction is to punch something, and I'm like, okay, I can't do that, because that's how I have to buy a new TV, and I'm, you know, wasting money doing stuff like that, so <laughs> I have to just find new outlets as to, like, okay, how can I try to get my anger out in a way that's not going to hurt myself or hurt anyone else, so, like, music, prayer, um, food, I won't even lie, food, I, I, 
That freshman 20 was something else. Yeah. <laughs> that was all of the 15, but that freshman yeah. 20 was something else. Because every time I got mad, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go back to school. Like, I'm going to go back to school. It's okay. It's going to make you feel better. But honestly, like, I would say you have to be honest with yourself about what you know you can handle. And you have to find different ways. You're not just going to know, like, well, okay, this is what's going to work for me. Like, you in a whole new setting, a whole new place, you feel like a whole different person, or you feel like you should be a whole different person. So it was it was hard trying to find new outlets, but and I, talking to people doesn't always work. Like I have a friend I literally will talk to every day, and we're not gonna just sit on the phone and complain about stuff. Like we don't, all right, you're done? Okay, so here's the solution. I feel like we should, you know, this is what we should do. Mm-hmm. But it's just, you have to be honest with yourself and figure out ways to, to really release. So mine became like isolate myself and just let it out for a moment and then put myself together and carry on. Yeah. Ebony, what how do you do with your anxiety? Um, mine is more so like socially in like social situations. So like I had to like learn what social situations I could thrive in. So like me trying to go to parties and I feel like especially at a PWI, like you know, you, you have your night parties and you have your mm-hmm. other parties. So like when you go to the parties that are majority black or whatever, you know, you have your people that already know each other there or are clicked up. So it's like, it, it's it's very high school I will say that. So like, it's hard to try to integrate or like make friends at those parties. So like, that's not my ideal social situation for like me to try to make friends or me to try to meet people. So like, you just gotta learn like what situations or social places to put yourself into. Like go to events around campus. Like we have a black student union. That's literally a place where everybody in there is trying to meet other black people on campus, trying to meet. Like, you know, mm-hmm. instead of a party where mm-hmm. you go with your friends and you go to hang out with your friends mm-hmm. and not really meet other people. So like, I feel like going to things like that kind of took away my social anxiety because it like lets me know that, okay, these people here actually want to get to know everybody here. Or like, just taking some of the pressure off trying to like, make friends so much, like, mm-hmm. I might be in a cab if I'm by myself or I see somebody else by themselves and I'd be like, okay, they look like a cool person. Let me go see if they want to have lunch together. Mm-hmm. Like little stuff like that that's not so like pressurized or like, oh, I have to have this many people around me or I have to go do this with this person. Like just taking the pressure off of like social situations kind of helped me with my anxiety when it came to that. I just recently learned, well, I wouldn't even say recently, but like I know like before I became a alumni, we would do like the paintings and mm-hmm. stuff, and like I really got deep into it. Like when I got to college, like I realized I like music and painting. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, like that's how I would just let a lot of stuff out. Like I just be painting, I just start crying. Mm-hmm. Like just because it's like an outlet. I feel like I could just be free in my own zone, just painting. And it don't even have to be like of a certain picture. It just be me, yeah. just painting, and. It just, I don't know, it's very calm and, you know, I listen to calm music while I'm doing it too, so mm-hmm. I'm in a calm setting and then I'll go to the park and do it also, so it's like nature and nature, painting, yes. and I just be in my own zone. I'm glad she got there. We used to go outside and paint yeah. in the summer program to teach you how to read and where you were to take it to college. Yeah. Chuck, what do you do doing your, you have a lot of anxiety, a lot going on? I feel like I listen to music and sleep a lot. Sleep. Yeah, I take naps at the <laughs> sleep, right? So, D, what do you do to get rid of stress? Music. Music? Yeah. That's your music. Okay. So, you guys in high school, was you guys are picking up some things? Yeah. Some, some good tips? Some good, some bad, some ugly, some stuff. What do you, what do, you do, Lexus, when you uh, got a lot of anxiety going on? I do things. Well, when it comes to other people, like, I call my mama. Mm-hmm. Like, I call my mom, like, okay, hey, mom, this is what's going on. I just, like, just dumb. Um, but something that I personally do, I'll take my guitar outside. We have a, um, I, I go to a Christian school, so, like, we have this thing called a prayer garden. And so, it's like, this really beautiful garden. And so, I will take my guitar out to the prayer gardens, and I'll just, um, I'll just go, and I'll just play my guitar, and I'll just worship and pray. Um, just out loud, and sometimes like people be doing stuff just be me, mm-hmm. and I just sing. I just talk to God, um, and that's the thing that I'll do. Just sing. Yeah. Jayla. Well, well, I did realize that 
I suffered from anxiety and depression over school. So it was like, it was like, at first I was just, you know, I, like, I had to realize it, like in the middle of school year. But at first I would just go to a party and then like, but now like, um, I do just calm myself down and pray and journal. And I used to take these meds for my anxiety um, called Lexipro, and it actually like switched my moods like to calm myself down and like instead of just all worked up and stuff so but I do like journal a lot and pray and I want to go back into um, painting because that did help me um, but yeah Good one. Um, I'm saying I'm, I'm still trying to like lead into it like how do I want to do it but one thing I did find was helpful was journaling like mm -hmm. I just go outside got my phone like so I put up some jazz and I just sat at the table like I found myself crying a couple times I'm like Jalayla what's <laughs> going on <laughs> like you okay I call my mom like at work because you know I have to deal with a lot of people especially yeah have to deal with them so I'm like mom I walk, I walk away I'm like please give me a second to talk to my mother I'll be back I'll be good for the rest of the shift, but you know, I'm still upset. So, but I'm also trying to get into like movement because like I, like I think you mentioned earlier, like trauma is stored in our body. Mm -hmm. So I found myself like my hips, like they really hurt mm -hmm. and like my knees, like I'm 19, why does right. my knees hurt? Right. It's cracking, ankles hurting, everything. <laughs> so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get into journaling, I'm trying to get into like movement and also the way like my eating habits as well because mm -hmm. I see like when I eat like meat and stuff, I'm like very angry, but when I eat like anything that's refreshing, I see like my mood is very uplifted. So I'm trying to like switch my thinking of like how do I eat and what I'm eating my body. Cause like they said, we eat, we eat, well, what, what, we are what we eat. We are what we eat <laughs> and I see it. <laughs> okay. So a couple other things. I hope you had some great takeaways real quickly. What did you take away from this today? Um, Understanding that a lot of people are going through things, and it's like you know, it's not just you. I know a lot of times they can feel like, oh, what's wrong with me, or oh, you know, you look at other people that's smiling all the time, you're like, oh, but well, their life is good. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, it's a part of life. We all going through something, mm -hmm. and I think once we find you know community and find people that we can go to, it could it take a lot of pressure off of ourselves mm -hmm. and giving ourselves um, what's the word? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think someone said earlier, allow yourself to make mistakes. That was you. You're going to make mistakes. That's a part of life. You're going to make it all, all the way through your adult life. Jackie, Jackie what's your takeaway? Um, don't take back off age. Because that's exactly what I was going to say. I have to realize I'm really only 20. Mm -hmm. And that this is the age that we're supposed to be dependent on our community and on our family to help us. And we're not supposed to have it all together because we're supposed to be figuring it out. I'd rather figure it out at 20 than have to figure it out at 40. Yes. Yes. I keep on telling myself that like I've, I went through a lot of heartbreak and a lot of crying and emotions and everything. And I'm like, okay, my favorite line is I'd rather be dumb at 20 than be dumb at 40. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather feel this now and know, okay, this is what I never want to feel again. This is what I did to get myself in this situation. I'll never do the same thing. Then to be later in life and I'm trying to figure out, oh, how did I get here? No, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I just learned, like I said, give myself a lot of grace and, and just know that in time it will work itself out and I'll figure out how to get through whatever it is I'm going through. Right. So Alexis got to go, but let's give Alexis a hand. Thank you for coming out, hanging out with us. I, didn't check, but I know I would have kind of speed this up a little bit because she has a beautiful voice. And uh, we're going to do a little activity in a few minutes, though. But I thank you for coming. I thank you for Absolutely. sharing. I enjoy following you on social media, seeing your growth and your maturity, and seeing you can be on campus and live in your truth, be a Christian, and be who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure she's had some challenges. I'm sure she's had to catch up. Oh, no, I can't go out now. Mm -hmm. And she has fun. I've seen her fun. Yeah, she's not just a stick in the mud. She likes to have fun. You know, I it's do. Balance, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay to be saved and represent Christ and still carry yourself and, and have fun. So I thank you so much. We're going to do some more of these. Probably going to do them virtually. Uh, maybe do one even before you guys go back to school. But I want to continue these fireside chats with my alumni because you guys are helping with others. When we post this, I know my high school is, I know y'all been helped today. And we're going to continue to do these things. But thank you, okay? Absolutely. Appreciate it. See you guys. Okay. Ebony, um, let's take away. Um, my biggest takeaway, I feel like, is just hearing everybody talk. I realize, like, we're all more alike than we think. Mm -hmm. Or, like, we all have way more similar struggles than we think. Like, of course, they're personalized. But, like, 
overall the broad topics we pretty much be going through the same thing so yes. like I, it just kind of made me feel like we should like try to be there for each other more because mm-hmm. we all do go through the same things and just like it's important to get to know ourselves and once you like go through college you you do get to know yourselves and you, and you get to know like what things calm you down what's your triggers how you react so like that's very important so like when you get into these situations you can kind of like know what to do to soothe yourself or know what to mm-hmm. do to help yourself in that moment and i feel yeah, like once you get triggers and how to come back after mm-hmm. jessica what you take away from today um kind of what i forgot asia what asia was saying um we're all gonna go through things and it's gonna be hard regardless mm-hmm. like if it's nothing you can do to avoid it but you can grow from it and learn mm-hmm. what makes you happy if that makes sense exactly Chuck. i feel like i took away like different strategies everyone uses to like mm-hmm. deal with being on campus and like learning this stuff. Just like kind of being out on their own. Exactly. Sorry. Um, I learned that here everybody talk about me time. Um, like a lot of people would think like just because you're by yourself sometimes that they like to consider that it's lonely. But it's me time is okay. Like mm-hmm. it's something that that's needed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Steve, what you think with him, Um, Just to protect yourself, protect your energy, and take care of your body, like, mentally and physically. Yes. Mm-hmm. And just stay focused. Like, yeah. Sadiq? Um, what I took away is that regardless if we're all, like, in the HBCU or PWI, we all have some of the same experiences mm-hmm. and similar in- issues. And I enjoy ha- uh, being able to see this panel and being able to take something away that I can apply to my, uh, my, the rest of my college life. Nice, nice. AD? I took away the mental status of this because I'm uh, I was just dealing with a lot of mental stuff this year. And I see in college I'm still going to be dealing with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to stop. So yeah. I feel like this really helped prepare me and understand that I'm going to go through a lot. But, you know, at least take that time out to make sure I'm good. I found somebody you can talk about accountability. One of the things, we've got two activities that we're going to do. Um, one, um, some of you all are going to win $25. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But also, um, Jayla and I, we was at our women's retreat at church, and the title was Forgive and Be Free. Mm-hmm. I want you guys to reflect on some things or some people you need to forgive. Mm-hmm. One of those people most likely should be yourself because everyone in here has done some things they wish they hadn't had done. Been some places they probably shouldn't have been by God's grace. You still around a lot of things. So I think all of us need to learn how to forgive ourselves first and foremost because we all have put ourselves in a jeopardizing situation. If you had new will to keep living, think about some people that you need to forgive because it's not for them, it's for you. You know, you hold yourself in bond, just hold it on to hurt and anger and malice and envy. You know, it's for you to learn and it's, it's a process. You know, again, for us, this weekend was profound because we had to release a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? I had to take a look at myself. They gave us a mirror, and I thought, you have to look at yourself. Well, I tell people all the time when I speak, I said, my mother is in heaven. She's going to whoop me one more time for the uh, let me in the heaven. She's going to say, hold on, you don't open that cage yet. Because I've done the fool. And now she knows because she can see. You know, you, you see what I'm saying? We all have done the food. We all have made mistakes. We all continue to make mistakes. So the first thing in healing is learn to forgive yourself. Would y'all agree with that? Yeah. So as you guys going into this summer, going into your next year, I want you guys to learn how to forgive yourself, forgive people who have wronged you. They may not even want to apologize. But again, it's not about them. It's for you, for your healing, and to let it go. So what we're going to do, you're going to write down some, some people that you need to forgive. We're going to put them in a balloon. I got a helium tank. We're going to go outside. We're going to release that. The key is not to bring it back. Once you let it go, it's gone. That's the process. Your AD like, ooh, you got to be able to let it go. That's the process of healing, okay? You guys cool with that? Think that's a good, something good? And I know we all got something. Uh, one thing should be on there is yourself. Everybody got something here they need to forgive themselves for. And if you're real with yourself, you can say that, okay? You think that's a good activity? You know, God yes. be got it, man. God be doing some God stuff. God be got it. And I just thought about this. I said, I got to share this with my baby. Because yeah. she and I were so blessed this weekend. I said, man, I got to share this. So when I get stuff, I always share it. Okay? So we're going to go.